Hi everybody. So I have some really, really good information to share with everybody today. And uh, you may want to take a second to pause and go get some paper and a pen so you can write a few things down. This video may be a little lengthy, but it's full. It's packed, it's jam packed with some really juicy um, stuff that I think will help a lot of people. So that's why I'm sharing it. All right, so let's get into it. I'm sorry about the hat and everything. Well, no, I'm not really sorry. I like my hat, but I've been out walking. So, okay. Um, anyway, NSU has now a postback program for its AA program. Isn't that wonderful? Like there's already one for a couple other medical programs uh, offered at NSU. Like I think the PA program has a postback. But now <laughs> Dr. Wagner, with his brilliant self, has created a postback program for um, our AA program. How wonderful is that? <laughs> okay, so here's how you get in. First of all, I think the program is offered in West Palm Beach. Uh, at the NSU campus there, but I'm not quite sure you might want to check into that part. It may be offered online I don't know All right, so but you can call dr. Ross and he will be the person who has all the answers if if you're new to my channel then dr. Ross is um, Employed with NSU at the Tampa campus and he is the person who literally walked me through my entire journey uh, to becoming um, an AA and I'm still on that journey of course um, but Dr. Ross helped me get in he was extremely instrumental in that so when people contact me I always point them in his direction because I'm not a guru I can't get you into the program I can only give you the information that um, I've gathered you know along the way on my journey so the post back program requires you to qualify the same as if you were qualifying for the AA program you have the same prerequisites the same GPA standard requirement um, you have to take the GRE or the MCAT. I took the GRE because the GRE for me was easier to get a higher grade. Um, I don't have a huge science background and I know that the MCAT, well, I suspect that the MCAT is more science focused than the GRE. And if your school will accept the GRE, then, you know, that, that's just the route that I would tell someone to go like, you know, I didn't take the SAT. I took the ACT because I knew it was easier to get a higher score because of how they scored the SAT as opposed to the ACT, right? So coming out of college, I'm coming out of high school, I made a 26 was my, I took the test twice. First I took it and I made a 21. I was just playing around, but my girlfriend made it higher than I did and I knew I was smarter than she was. So I took the test again and I made a 26. Um, I gave it more effort. Hey, don't do that now. Give, give it all your effort the first time. I made a 310 on the GRE because I remember Dr. Ross mentioning that score um, in one of our conversations. So I shot for 310. I made it by the skin on my teeth, but I made it nonetheless. I can't tell you what the score is now. Uh, for getting in, you can call whatever prospective school and they should be able to tell you, you know, the target scores, right? It should be helpful. But I, I know people who have made it into the program, who made less than 310 and they made it into the NSU program and they're still there and they're striving. They're doing extremely well. So don't use my 310 as your marker. The 310 helped me. I didn't have, I had a 2.9 GPA. So making a 310 on that GRE was part of what helped me get in it may not be the same for you so don't use that as your marker anyway back to the post back program so the post back program um, is a way for you to if you have let's say you applied and you didn't hear anything back which is something I've heard from people um, since I started posting videos or you know you did not get in you got feedback and you didn't get in or you got put on the waiting list then 
the postback program could help you. you but you got to give it everything you have, you know. I think that it's a great program. I was looking over uh, some of the courses that they're offering, and they really are the courses that um, are difficult in the program. So they're giving you a little bit ahead of time. They're preparing you. And I think like this is so genius. It really is. Like um, there are two semesters and it's a fall and a winter semester of one year. And you finish just in time to go into the, the beginning, the first semester of the AA program. So that's great too. Like it's everything is still fresh in your mind and you're going right into the program. But going through the post back program does not get you into. You have to put in work. There's a requirement for getting into the program. Like I think there is a minimum grade for passing but then you know uh, Dr. Ross can give you all of the most accurate information um, there is a requirement just like in the AA program like we have to pass with a 75 anything beneath a 75 is not passing and you have to remediate the courses and you don't get but so many times to remediate and then you're, you know, you're out. So like, even if, let's say I took uh, a class and I didn't pass it and I remediate it, I didn't pass the remediation. I have two remediations, right? But you don't get to take your second remediation. <laughs> you don't get to use your second remediation on that same course to remediate again. You're just out of the program and you need to start over so naturally it's going to be harder to get back into that program my advice would be to apply at another school and never even mention <laughs> the previous school um, th that's just what I would do if I could get away with not mentioning the other school then I will because you don't get to take any of those credits or anything with you right so anyway I don't know if that's a you know a doable thing but I'd be trying not to mention the school that I failed at. Okay. This post back program may work for other schools. I'm not sure. Let's get into what to expect in the program. So there's a fall semester and in that fall semester you're going to take an intro to anesthesiology assistant profession. We have in the AA program there's an intro to anesthesiology but that's in every program. So there's nothing different between NSU and somewhere else. And then there is an uh, intro to cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology. Listen, if you don't have any anatomy and physiology background, you need to get it. Really, I know I've mentioned this before, but I can't stress it enough. Those are the weed and seed courses. Everything after anatomy and physiology are course specific. So that's really good. But you got to get past the didactics, right? And anatomy and physiology are a part of your didactics. I can't say it enough. I've talked to people at the Jacksonville campus, the Tampa campus, the Colorado campus. And of course, I was at the uh, Fort Lauderdale campus. And... These courses are challenging. They're more challenging at the Fort Lauderdale campus than at any other campus. Um, but everybody does things differently. Like I was saying before in the last video, that you know you may not have as hard a time with anatomy and physiology at another campus, but you may have a harder time in pharmacology than you do at the FSU campus. So each campus has its little thing. Yeah. Okay. So then you're uh, you're doing an intro to pharmacology. Pharmacology is a difficult course. Um, so they're doing so good by if if I could have done a post back, then I think I would have done that before coming into the program. You know, just so I know what I'm looking for. You know what, what's going to happen, and it doesn't take any more of your time. It's not like you have to sit back a whole year because you're doing it fall and winter, you're applying because you have to have applied to the, uh, 
program in order to get into the post back program you have to have already applied you have to have a CASA application in for Nova in order to get into the post back and so they're preparing you during the fall and the winter for what you're going to experience in the summer once you're in the program get it so great because if you look at one of my videos you'll see where i'm saying hey you know i got anatomy coming up so i'm going to start doing some youtubing you know but here it is right here not only that but there's pharmacology too i'm not prepared for pharmacology right but you will be okay in the winter semester you're doing basics of medical equipment with the lab that's great when you find out what neil's iv man is <laughs> okay uh, and then there is basics of ventilation with the lab. We call that airway in our program. And then there's um, patient monitoring and assessment with lab. And that's sort of like EKG or something like that, I'm sure. I don't know for sure, but Dr. Ross. And so that completes your, um, your post back program, right? And it's 18 credits. I don't know if those credits are transferable over into the AA program. I think you're still going to have to take anatomy and physiology and airway and EKG or ECG when you get into the program. I'm, I'm for sure that you are because this is just skimming across the top, but it's preparing you. Okay, so here's the best part about this. If you make a 3.6 GPA, which you need to verify with Dr. Ross because that can change, but you make a 3.6 GPA, then you are guaranteed a spot in the program. Yep, you're guaranteed a spot in the program. If you make a 3.3, you're guaranteed an interview. Now, when I ask the question, is it at a school of your choice when you make a 3.6? I'm not quite sure. How many interviews, if you do 3.3, can I interview at each campus? I don't know. I don't know. So those are some things that you want to find out, you know, because you really want to be completely informed when you go into the program. And if I get that information, I'll be uh, for sure to uh, share it with you, like, right away. As soon as I get it, I'll come in and shoot a video to you really quickly. But at any rate, the qualifications to get into the the program are the same and that is because you are actually applying for the AA program so you have to have those things done in order to get into the post back program and then when you get in you get all of this really good meaty stuff that's going to help you once you get in the program your struggle won't be the same as mine or anyone else's who's being introduced to material for the first time it's a really great idea. I think um, Dr. Ragnar really hit it, hit the nail on the head with this one. And now, here's the last thing. NSU now also has a doctorate program for anesthesiologist assistant. So, how great is that, right? Um, they haven't launched the program yet because Things have to be put in place. And so that's what they're doing. But be prepared. Be prepared. Some of you can go all the way through. I think that having a PhD in anatomy is going to put us at a higher pay scale, most likely, than even CNAs. CRNAs, excuse me. CRNAs. Please forgive me, guys. I didn't mean that. Meet me where I'm at. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, you know, so in some places, CRNAs get paid more than AAs, although we do the same work. But this PhD program is going to put us at the top. I think CRNAs have their ceiling. There's nowhere else to go in nursing with anesthesiology. But we still have one more step. And I think that's going to put us above CNAs. So like, you know, right now, CNAs are beginning to work in a, with autonomy. And AAs can't. In some areas, you don't need to work under an anesthesiologist if you are a CRNA. Well, with a PhD, I'm thinking that's where we'll be. 
but we have autonomy. At some point, you have to look at it that way, right? <laughs> but don't quote me. You know, the program has it launched. We don't know how the medical, you know, uh, environment is going to receive the PhD. But hey, and one more thing. Congratulations. I haven't said it already to PAs because now they have autonomy. Go. You guys rock. That's, that's awesome. Congratulations, PAs. So anyway, and you know what that makes me think about? If PAs have autonomy, can they become AAs with autonomy without having to have a PhD? Hmm. Because PAs can come over into AA, right? We know that. Hmm. When I get the answer, I'll let you know. If you get the answer, you let me know. Okay, so we're at 16 minutes already, and I think I have uh, just about everything that I want to tell you about this AA program. So make sure that you, you get into it. Um, if you think you need that kind of help, that edge that's going to push you over, you just want to get in there to see what the program is going to be like. It's, you, you don't have to go to AA school. Uh, once you get in and you see you don't like it, you can withdraw your application, right? It, it doesn't have to go that way. You can always say no if it doesn't feel right to you. But honey, if you come this far and you get into that post back program, you're going to love it. You're going to love anesthesia. I hope that um, other schools will begin to accept the NSU post back program as well because it's beneficial to everybody no matter which way you go pharmacology is the same lab for anesthesia is the same anatomy is the same physiology is the same so you should be able to go to emory to submit an application and get an edge because you did the nsu post back program right i don't know arrogance territorial issues but all right there's the information. I hope you got it. I gave you some numbers. I gave you some courses. I gave you some good jewels, right? I wish you all luck. You only need one. Just one acceptance. Do what you can do to get that acceptance. Okay, bye.